Okay, so we're going to play this um, uh, this uh, this this chat game. So click on the, your bottom row of Zoom and click on the chat symbol. And okay. ask some questions and just type in your answer. The first thing that you know comes to mind um, uh, when when I ask the question. And it, it, this isn't these aren't tests or anything. So just whatever comes to your mind. Um, so. Are you currently employed and you're thinking of a new role or are you not employed now and looking for a new role? So thinking or looking? Okay. Exclamation point. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, great. And in like a word, tell us a little bit about like, your industry, if you're finance, if you're bookkeeping, if you're HR, if you're, thank you, Taylor, if you're Sorry. retail or um, uh, if one word that describes a bit of your field. Oh. Hmm. Uh -huh. Ooh, fun events. I am almost always amazed at people that do events, you know, because I have 20 years. I am still, still alive. Major. Oh, thank you. Um, 20 years of human resources. And one of the things, the events, the biggest events that an HR person puts together is like the annual picnic. And I'm horrible at it. Like terrible. <laughs> like one year I forgot forks. Like forks. So I'm always in awe of people who put events on. Okay. All right. Good, good. And the, the number one thing that's on your mind as far as the job search, is it, um, I don't know exactly what job I should do. Is it, I really need to pull together my resume. Is it, I have this LinkedIn, I know I need one, but I don't know how. Or I'm in the middle of interviews and I need interview prep. Like kind of which one of those four fits you best? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, okay. So the four things are I'm not really sure my direction so maybe that could be one, like direction, my career direction. Um, the next one could be, um, I know the job I want to go after and I'm pulling together a resume. And so I have questions around re my resume. A third one would be, I don't know how to put together my LinkedIn profile. I know I need to put one together. And the fourth one could be like, I have an interview coming and um, doing interview prep. Hi, Kimmy. Okay, so I put those four. Yeah. Direction, resume, or it could be none of those. Direction, resume, LinkedIn, interview prep. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, David. Okay, good, good. All right, okay. So I saw a couple of LinkedIn. Let's start there. And if you have questions along the way of what I'm creating with LinkedIn, and it's been maybe like 10, 15 minutes on LinkedIn, just throw your questions in chat or you can just blurt it out. Yeah, or you write your questions in chat. Okay, so LinkedIn, used to be, and Kimmy does, not, um, Casey did, she doesn't know this. Casey wasn't even born at when LinkedIn was created, probably. And it was um, launched in 2003. I totally remember when it was launched. I was working at a company in recruiting. My colleague next to me and said, wow, look at this, this LinkedIn. Back then, it was an uh, online Rolodex. Casey, do you even know what a Rolodex is? No, yeah. 
a Rolodex was this thing we would turn with everyone's business cards taped to a this card and we're, da, 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 it's all in alphabetical order. So we would turn it, blah, 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 all the the things. So it was an online Rolodex back then. Very quickly, LinkedIn found out that recruiters were using it to find candidates. So it morphed into this whole recruiting thing that we see today. If you've ever tried to work in LinkedIn, it's super clunky. It's like not an intuitive system. You can tell its legacy is old and it's hard to work in. It's because it wasn't meant to do what it's doing today. Yeah. Okay. So because of that, um, because of that, we need to use LinkedIn for two things in job search. One, to be found. If recruiters are using it to find people, we want to figure out how we can be one of those found. The second thing is to be validated. For example, David's going to apply for a job. He's going to submit his, his resume. They're going to open up and do a social media search on him. We'll open his LinkedIn profile. We'll look at his resume. We'll look at his LinkedIn and compare. Anything looks wrong is a red flag. If you have two red flags, this is, this is like, not scientific, but it's like my experience in recruiting, two red flags, then they kick you out of contention. So you, so you, that validation is super important. Yeah. Okay. So how do you be found? And then how do you be validated? <clears throat> now, um, some of those that aren't showing our faces are in what I call stealth mode. <clears throat> you don't want your boss to know you're looking. <clears throat> And if you've ever seen someone's LinkedIn profile where they write open for opportunity, you know, or they click, I want a recruiter to be able to see that I'm looking. The recruiter at their company can see they're looking too. So they want to be in stealth mode. Yeah. And yet to be found. Okay. So two reasons why we bend the will of LinkedIn for us in job search, one to be found and two to be validated. Let's talk about how to be found. Now, Casey, you should know this. If you're in marketing, there's search engine optimization. Yeah? Search engine optimization. And there are parts of your LinkedIn profile that is super duper sensitive to SEO. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see my LinkedIn profile. I want to show and show you the most sensitive parts of your LinkedIn profile. So you know what you need to fix and change on yours. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. 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 If you cannot, um, please post in chat that you can't see my screen. Then I'll fix it. Okay. Alrighty. So this is my LinkedIn profile. I don't recommend you make yours like mine because <clears throat> I'm getting, um, customers, right? Mine is different because I have a business and I use it for like a landing page for my business. Okay. Um, so don't necessarily use, use my as an example. Okay. So these are the most sensitive parts of the LinkedIn profile. Your name is probably the most sensitive, but you can't really do anything there. When a recruiter is looking for a marketing specialist, for example, they're going to put in the keyword marketing. And you can't really put marketing here. Some people figured it out and they started to put like stuff by their name and LinkedIn will shut down their profile. So you can't really do anything. The next sensitive part is this. Right underneath your name, that title. And you can change that title. You can change it by clicking here and going right in and changing that title. Okay. All right. So this is super sensitive. If you are targeting a job and you're employed now, then you should use your title like marketing specialist at ABC source. <clears throat> so that when someone is doing a search for a marketing specialist, you will be, you'll hit really high up on for search engine optimization. If you're not working for a company now, I recommend that 
maybe use your own title, okay? And the reason is that the most attractive look to a recruiter is someone who's employed and super happy. When they, hide, when they find someone who's employed and super happy where they are, they are a, hard, a much higher value catch than someone who's open for an opportunity. It's kind of like dating. Okay. So, you know, like, um, uh, I, I like to use, like, senior prom. And I don't know if you guys ever had the guy who went around and went, hey, you got a D for senior prom. What about you? You got a D for senior prom. Hey, I'm looking for a date, guys, for senior prom. And you're like, oh, awkward. It's the same feeling when you're open for opportunity. The recruiters are like, ooh, awkward. So keep dating in mind, okay, when you're working on your, on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so this is the most sensitive part of um, LinkedIn for search engine optimization. And then the titles are the next sensitive. All the titles are next sensitive. Then, um, so the top title and then the rest of the titles. Then the third level of sensitive, because the first one was your name, that's the second. The third level of sensitive would be the open um, text spaces. In the about section, and your jobs. So there you wanna make sure you have all the keywords. If a recruiter is gonna do a search for a marketing specialist, you wanna write marketing, marketing specialist, specialist, and you wanna make sure you have that um, throughout your LinkedIn profile, okay? And then that is it. That is all of the sensitive parts of your LinkedIn profile, really. Um, I, sorry, I hope I'm not making anyone seasick. Volunteer experience, no SEO whatsoever. Um, those skills and endorsements, no SEO whatsoever. So you don't need to put any of those in. Okay? All right. Um, LinkedIn will... I'm a teacher, so what I put in for something different? Awesome question. David's question is, because he's doing a pivot into retail, right, David? Um, he's doing a pivot into retail. And so how in the world is he going to put, because he's currently a teacher there. My recommendation for David, because your title is your title and you cannot really, it's not, doesn't feel good to like put a wrong title or someone else's title or something like that. What David could do is, yeah. So you are, what is, where are you teaching? David, I can even look at your resume. Okay. Hey, I'm teaching at Mililani Community Church Preschool. That's your title, right? Uh -huh. okay. In this role, do you do any type of retail-ish um, work, tasks? Um, gee. I clean the classes after. Um, not really. I mean, we teach kids, so what would that... <clears throat> I would say I would put customer service. Oh, yeah, customer service, because we do try to um, build relationships with the parents and with the staff. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, with customer service, because it's a, we're providing a child care service. Right. So you could do that. See your title here? Teacher uh -huh. in the Community Church Preschool, V-Bar. This thing is called a V-Bar. Up and down, it's near your enter key, customer okay. service. So that when a recruiter lands on your things, uh -huh. they won't be confused. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good, good question. Awesome question. Okay. Make sense? I'll, I'll just, so I'll just leave that. And then the rest, of it, they can check my resume for. Oh, yeah, I will. Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome.
Okay. Um, so when a recruiter need, in order for a recruiter to find you, you need to be in the system per LinkedIn as highly connected, <clears throat> highly connected. And these are the parameters in order for you to be bumped up into that high level. So if you're highly connected, you, you show up on the um, uh, first page of a search. Um, so one, you have an image got to have an image. If you don't have an image on your LinkedIn profile, then you're not considered highly connected. Uh, another one, you need 501 connections. Third, an about section completed. Fourth, four jobs. Can be three jobs at one company, but they need to be four separate positions, four jobs. Um, those are the parameters in order for LinkedIn to deem you as highly connected. Okay. All right. Um, so that's how to be found search engine optimization using keywords and being highly connected. Is everyone, you can throw it in chat. How many connections do you think you have in your LinkedIn? Off the top of your head, do you know? I have, I know, oh, oh sorry, I gave that to, I, I posted to the wrong person. <clears throat> Three. So it's a little, little ways away from 501. Yeah. Um, I have 29,987 connections. My network. 29, oh, 29,700. 46 is because I jumped on super early when it came out in 2003 and I just accepted everyone as my connection. Now you want to get to 500 and I'm going to give you a hack for the fastest way to get there. The fastest, logical, safest way, not spamming people weirdly. And that is, see this nine square here, click on there and go to groups. Join some groups. Join groups with a lot of members in it. And join groups that are kind of in your niche. Marketing group. Retail group. Research group. Yeah? yeah? And then when you're in a group, say for example, click on the group. Then see here the members. Go to see all. Then how LinkedIn does this, everyone near you, your zip code, near you will show up higher. And if they're second degree, they'll be showing up higher than third degree. It's kind of the same way a recruiter will see you when they do a search. If you're near where they're looking for someone and um, your uh, degrees of connection are closer, then you'll end up higher. And that's why you want to get to 501 because then LinkedIn pump, bumps you into the higher category. So say, for example, I want to go ahead and I want to connect with Dominic. Click on Dominic's name. Go to more. I want to connect. Add a note and say something like, hi, um, I'm um, expanding my network. We are in the same I forgot what the name of the group was. Group in LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Okay. I copy that and I send the invitation. Boom. Send it. Go back. Then you go to the next person. More. Oh, here's no can. Some, some they don't let you. See, some, oh, there, connect, add a note, paste, boom, send, back, mm -hmm. next person, connect, add a note, paste, boom, send, back. You can watch a Netflix, Netflix show and send out 600, bam, 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 like that. And it's logical. These are people in your same industry, people who live kind of near you, and you're connecting just to broaden your network. That's it. And you begin to see all the acceptances come through. 
So you want to get yourself to 501, okay? Um, okay, okay. Kimmy is asking this question. So Kimmy, can you take yourself off mute and, and tell me a little bit of what you're thinking about this question? Here, I'm going to stop share. Do I need to bring you off mute? Oh, there. Okay, so um, the purpose of LinkedIn is to get your face out there, your business, and this and that. So if, um, if I um, welcome or connect with uh, competitors, because I'm a real estate agent, so every agent is a competitor, right? Yeah. Um, do you still connect with them? Yes. Okay. And the reason is? Because it doesn't matter who you connect with. Oh. What you want to do is you want to, um, because if, especially for realtors, they're probably highly connected. Uh -huh. As soon as you connect with one, you now have secondary connections that are big, a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. But now you ask a really interesting question because uh -huh. sometimes when you look at your profile, yeah, um, other people can see your connections. Yes. Yeah? You can turn that off. Oh. You can see all my connections, but I can turn that off. And this is how you turn that off. You go into here, me, settings, privacy. Oh, wait. I don't see your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start all over again. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay, so yeah. you're in your profile, and you go up here to me. Uh-huh. Settings, privacy. Who can see your connections? Oh, okay. Click only you. So then it doesn't matter who you connect with. This is very important if you're in stealth mode. Because if you begin to connect with companies you're targeting, begin mm -hmm. to connect with executive recruiters. You don't want anyone at your workplace to know who you're connected to. Yeah. So you go in and who can see your connections? Only you. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good question. All right. Okay, so, oh, another thing that is really interesting now. If you're a targeting a job, and I'm going to show again my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah? Yeah. Your zip code is a weird thing in LinkedIn. You know your zip code? That's not my zip code where I live. I put that zip code because LinkedIn has a default that it's like 10 miles around me is by default. So if a recruiter is looking for somebody that lives within 10 miles because then it's an easy commute, they would rather hire somebody who's not going to complain about traffic. So they can go in there and change the um, parameters of their search, saying, I want you to find people in LinkedIn that are 15 miles away, 10 miles away, versus the other side of the island. And so all those people who are closer will show up higher. If you're targeting a job and you know you're going to work in town, find a zip code right in the middle of town. And you put that zip code here. Is that crazy? And then you, you select something, you know, whatever it's going to be. I don't know. Um, 96812. Is that a town? 96812. Yeah. So then it just says Honolulu, not saying exactly where or whatever, but pick a zip code like within 10 miles of where you would um, travel to and work so that you show up there. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so that means that because I live in Mililani, I'm not going to put Mililani's zip code then. I'll nope. put like a, I, I put like an IA zip code. That's right. 96701. Maybe Halava, right? So you, yeah, what you, can, yep, you can take a look at a map. And there's a map, um, a radius map here. Can you guys still see my screen? Yep. Radius map. All I did was I did radius map. 
and you can put in a, a address. Nine six. Ayo. Yeah. Huh. See, I went ten miles. I went ten miles. Boom. Oh, plenty. See. Okay, let me pop back up. Yeah, but if you did Melani, right? Yeah. Gone. So you want to pick what? Aia? Yeah, Aia. Uh huh. Nine six seven zero one. Yeah. Okay. And it might show Aia though. So what you could do is you can find the first Honolulu zip code, and it'll just say Honolulu. Uh mm huh. -hmm. What if you're looking for jobs in the mainland, but you live here? Oh, such a great question, Casey. Okay, I'm going to stop share. All right. Now, um, where, where in the mainland are you looking for a job? Um, anywhere on the West Coast. I was mostly looking in San Francisco, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have someone, um, a friend, relative in the area that you could stay with? Um, not right now because everyone's working from home, but yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, how come they're working from home? What? Oh, oh, oh so no, no, no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, you cannot really travel. and Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you could, if they, if they offered you a job, could you stay, like, a couple weeks while you look for an apartment? You could stay with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I recommend you make that known is on your resume. You make okay. that known on your resume, not on your LinkedIn profile. Your okay. LinkedIn profile, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, and then, because if you're, especially if it's the whole West Coast, yeah? Like, we know here, if you put um, 94577 as the zip code in San Leandro, it is exactly covers everywhere that people would work, you know, on the okay. radius map. Yeah, but for you on your resume, you I, what I would put is I would put permanent address, temporary address. So they okay. know that they don't have to pay for you to move. You know, you mm -hmm. look like an easier move to them than um, like a super expensive move. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, so... Um, that's to be found on LinkedIn. That's how you be found. The uh, other part is to be validated. You want to make sure that the titles and the dates match your resume. Remove everything off your LinkedIn that's not on your resume. Just validate, make sure that is the same. Yeah. Take dates off of your um, uh, education, especially if you're concerned about discrimination of age. Strip it off from your resume and take, also take it off of your LinkedIn profile. Okay. So that is a primer on LinkedIn. Thoughts, questions? No? Okay. We're going to go to the next one. Um, Okay, so Casey, and I know David is working on this as well. Um, uh, for your resume, when you say that you're, that is kind of where you are right now, uh, have you, where are you in the process of writing a resume? Um, I have it written, I guess. I think I'm trying to improve more of like the job application process before the interview to like actually get the interview. Um, so that's why I put resume. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't been in the process and you haven't created your resume yet? Oh, I do have one. Oh, you do have one? I'm just looking to improve it, I guess. Yeah. And you're targeting the San Francisco area and uh -huh. you're in marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, uh, so San Francisco is the second most competitive employment market in the United States. The most competitive is New York City. New York City is a very different feeling. They're very hoity-toity. They're very um, Manhattan, and everything is like like she-she. Um, uh, in, here in Silicon Valley, it's 
slippers and shorts and much more laid back, no tie. It's not, you know, like that at all, but it's much more colorful. Um, because Netflix, think Netflix, and, and a lot of the, the uh, you would never put any color on a resume in, um, uh, in New York, but here it should definitely be colorful. My recommendation if you're in marketing is to have a look that looks like this here. I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to share my screen again. Linda Ma. Do you guys see Linda Ma? Yeah? See how much white space there is? This is the way to go when you're targeting higher level, higher level, and um, the Bay Area. Okay. Icons work here. If you're not in a Bay Area, I would get rid of icons. Yeah, because then they're like, what's that? It's too Bay Area-ish. Then something like this would work in Seattle if you're targeting like the Seattle market. Yeah. And okay. happy to share this template with you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, throw your email in the chat or however you want to. Okay, I'm going to put my email here. And just email me and I'll send you the template. Anyone who wants a template, just email me and I'll send you the template. It's a beautiful, gorgeous template. It's been very, very successful at helping people um, get interviews. Okay. All right. Sorry. You can hear the thing now. All right. Any questions about the resume? No, I would totally recommend, David, the one you use, the one that you've been working on, because that, that'll work really, really well with the, the, um, the um, uh, target market for you. Yeah. Okay, um, so when you're writing, and you can watch last week's, yeah, I highly recommend, Casey, you watch last week's um, recording, because I go through my crazy hack of writing a resume. You always write to a template. And then you fill the space of that template and you force yourself not to go any more than that. So it doesn't get super cramped and lots and lots of information. Uh, um, are you, do you have, uh, are you a new grad or do you have years of work experience and how many were years of work experience? Um, I graduated in 2017. Okay. Yeah. So three, Perfect. Yeah. Use a two page format for you. Okay. Yeah. You're not a new grad. Oh my goodness, guys. One last thing about the LinkedIn profile I forgot to talk about is the image. Your, the image is the most important thing on your LinkedIn profile. It is what will get a recruiter to call you or not. Seriously, it's so sad, but it's so true. So your LinkedIn image is really important. And my recommendation is that if I, you could see your two ears, um, if you could see your two ears equally, then that's how you want your face to be. You notice if I just turn my head a little bit, my ear is gone. You don't want that. Because imagine if I'm talking to you and I'm always looking at you like this. You're wondering, why is she looking at me side eye? You know, versus when I talk to you like this. Or if I, and it's like your face is a plane. You want it to be parallel to the lens. So if you're like this, Imagine if I'm always talking to you like this. What do you think about me versus I talk to you like this? Or if I'm always talking to you like this, right? Completely different feelings. So you want your face like that. Whatever you wear is the appropriate wear for that um, role. Go outside with your iPhone, put on portrait mode so it fuzzes out the background. And the most important thing is your smile. You want the smile to look like you're... Uh, the person you love, you love so much, he makes you laugh is standing there taking the picture for you. That smile is the most important thing. There is this guy, he had terrible LinkedIn 
um, profile, but he would get recruiter calls twice a week. And I'm like, how come? I looked at his photo and he looked awesome. Like his picture was great. Nothing else was on his LinkedIn profile. And he got call after call after call. Now, women, hair behind when you take the picture. Because imagine, right? What are you thinking about me? Like, what's up with her, right? So hair all in the back. If you take with, with jewelry, make it clunky, not thin things, not dangly things, okay? Like clunky stuff. Um, and uh, David, when you wear your earring, now, just kidding. Okay, so clunky, clunky earrings, okay? And here in the back. All right. Oh, thank you. Lori said that um, uh, the recording is on the webpage. So you can take a look at it when you're writing your resume. Oh, good idea. Uh, where, Pastor Lori, is that webpage? Where do they go? Pastor Lori. I don't know. Sorry, I was trying to um, type it out, but it should be on the NHCO uh, Aloha Teams. And there, um, actually, it's there's a link where your initial registration was. So there should be a link that's up. I know they put it up there. And that should link you into all the clips from the first session as well as the second sh session. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can find the link to send. You yeah. know what I'll do is once I get the link, I will send it to everybody on the list. Oh, thank you. That way you'll have the link and you can just click on it. Yep. Good, good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any questions about um, uh, resumes? Cover letters. You got to have a cover letter. You have to have a cover letter. Um, uh, about six months ago, I pulled together 24 corporate recruiters and I asked them, do you care if we have a cover letter? And um, like half of the room said, I don't care. I don't care if you have a cover letter or not, right? Because the only reason why we have cover letters is because like, I don't know if anyone remembers, when we applied for a job, Casey, you're gonna laugh. We used to print our stuff on beautiful linen paper like our resume, and then we would have a cover letter, would fold it up and put it in a matching envelope and mail it. So that's why we have cover letters. But now in the digital world, we don't need one, right? It's not going to show up in anyone's, in, in an envelope or anything like that. It just felt wrong not having one. But we need to because when I asked this question to those group of recruiters, how many of you would put discount, not call, Put in the no pile a candidate who did not submit a cover letter. Shocking, a third of the hands went up. One third, because we're old school, you know, one third of the recruiters said they would just throw that resume away if they didn't have a cover letter. So because we don't know if they're old school, not old school like that, we should always have a cover letter. And please, if you write a cover letter, please do not start it with, I saw your ad on Indeed for the marketing specialist, one, two, five, four, fifth, six, seven, a requisition number, and I'd like to put my name in a hat. Please don't start it that way. 99.99% .99 of the cover letters start that way, and rec recruiters will throw away your entire application if they read that. They want it to be distinct. They want it to be unique. You know, especially if you're going for marketing, that first line got to be your hook. That's your clickbait. So make it a good first sentence. All right. So that's cover letters. All right. Now, this is the trick to getting calls. If you apply for jobs on the applicant tracking system, there's a less than a 10% chance that they're going to call you. 9% or lower. You can increase that exponentially by networking. Okay, networking. And this is where you have someone in your inner circle who loves you to death, who will do anything for you, 
sends an email to the hiring manager, stay away from HR, sends an email to the hiring manager saying, A, I hear you're looking for a marketing specialist. If so, I totally want to put in a good word in for Casey. Casey and I worked together. She was helping us at their church and she pulled together this marketing thing for us and was awesome. Here's her resume. Give her a call or I can tell you more about her. Even though they don't know each other. Yeah, that is golden. And we all know that's how we get jobs. It's through our connections, through our network. Going to be a little bit harder for you, Casey, because you're a different state. But it's totally okay for someone in your in Hawaii to send an email to an employer uh, in California. Totally okay. So, so make sure if you want to if you want to um, guarantee someone is actually going to look at your stuff instead of an applicant tracking system, is that networking? That is the secret sauce of recruiting networking now yeah. and it's not linkedin who who do i link with second degree not like that having a friend who loves you to death knows your work ethic send an email to the hiring manager or up that chain of command not hr Oof. hey i think you're looking for a marketing specialist want to put in a good word in okay all right okay okay all right uh let's see Oh, thank you, Lori. All right. Questions? Questions? No? Okay. So if my friend were to recommend me for a retail position, then he would, he would just address it like hiring manager. There's no, if we don't know the name of that, just put hiring manager at Safeway kind of thing. I think we can find out who that is. Oh. I think we can find out who the store manager is for sure, right? So maybe not hiring manager, but up that chain of command. Oh, okay. Because I know Walmart, when I go to the bathroom, there is the name of the store manager posted in the bathroom. Yep. And you have the produce or whichever secondary manager. So there's the two manager names you know, there's problems at the store, then I guess you contact them. So that's who I would con have them contact. Is the you wouldn't. Your my friend. friend wouldn't. Oh, okay. Because you have everything in it for yourself to look uh -huh. good. Your friend has nothing in it for him. Mm -hmm. Only because he thinks you're amazing. And he thinks you're so amazing, he would take time out of his day to send a note to someone else with nothing in return. Yeah. I have friends like that that wouldn't do that. Yeah. That's the power of it. If you send it yourself, it's like, I'm a recruiter. I get these hundreds a day. Mm -hmm. I don't pay any attention to them. But when I get one from someone else, it goes, hey, Kara, I hear you're looking for an executive assistant. Boom. I'm like, oh. it's like manna falling from heaven. Yeah. It's like, like a personal me. reference in a way. It is. It is as strong as a personal reference as it can be. Now, your friend may not know the, the manager over at Walmart, but I bet that they would be like, oh, thank you. You know, thank you. Because it just mm, okay. so much more when someone else recommends someone. Okay. We're um, always like that. Hey, you know someone that does, right? Always like that. Who uh -huh. does this? Who do you know? And they're the ones we call. Oh, I need a new air conditioner. Who do you know? I need a new realtor. Who do you know? It's all that kind of word of mouth. So that is super powerful. That's how you get phone calls. Okay. Okay. My friend works at KHON. KHON. Yeah. That's um, Ch Chichesky. I, I forget. I, I don't know. I'm saying his name wrong. Oh, but anyway. K Howard, the chef, or, Howard. 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 Right. Howard, That's KHON. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. So she worked there and she was looking for a marketing intern, a marketing specialist. Shucks, man, Casey. Okay, she was looking for a marketing. Hey, she might be looking for someone else. Casey. Okay. Um, uh, and she's, she does like marketing stuff. She's like the director of marketing there at KHON. And so she had all these candidates and she posted in our group chat, which I cannot stand because there's like 27 people on it. Anybody know anybody? And at that time, my neighbor, Sam, who when I used to live in Wailuna, 
My neighbor's, uh, my neighbor, her son just graduated from some college on the mainland and moved back home. And she posted on her Facebook, oh, Sammy's back home. He's in marketing. Anybody know anything? At the time when my friend Sandra said, he you know anybody? So I called my friend. I said, hey, Sammy's still looking for a job. Yeah. So I got Sam and I'm like, hey, you want to write Katie Jo in? And he goes, sure. So I sent over, right? And she told me, she goes, you know what, Sammy? Your resume was terrible. But if it wasn't for you because Karen knows you, I would have never interviewed you. Bam. That's how that works. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And if you have a friend that's in retail, that's like a store manager for a competitor, even better. But number one criteria, they love you to death. So if that person is, you know, kind of more far removed, the store manager, ah, get someone close to it and love you to death because they'll, they'll rave about you. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions, questions. Okay. So question for you in chat. From this, what do you feel motivated to work on now? Like if you were to put like one or two things that, oh, I'm going to work on this now. What are those things that you're going to work on? Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Yes. Find people who love me. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to, okay. So JT, J, JT said, how do I find people to love me? And I am such a um, uh, not so organized person. Okay. So I always create things to help me stay organized. So here, I'm going to share something with you. This is what I did. I created this Google Doc. I call it the network of 20, and I send this to, my, to the people that I work with, my clients. And here I write the name, like people who love me to death. I don't even know how to spell. Do shifts key, okay? Friend, um, newscaster, and then you give them two scores. How much do they love you? Oh, maybe a seven. How influential are they? Arbitrary number because an executive assistant can be super duper influential. So don't go by titles now, you know, because you know those people who know everybody kind of person. Howard, I would say that's probably a 10, right, as far as influential. So what you want to do is you want to make a list of 20. Force yourself to do 20. Some people easy 20. You can do 30, 40. But if you're having a hard time, force yourself to do 20 because the 17, 18, 19, 20 are always your better ones if you force yourself. Something about the tail end. Oh, I know somebody. You know, like you're on a roll and you're like, oh. But if you stopped at five, you'd be always at five. But if you force yourself, the 17, 18, 19, and 20 are going to be your best names. Now, when you have your totals, some people are kind of shy, like, David, he's so not shy. So he probably would just call Howard. He goes, Howard, because Howard's the, num the, the highest number here. Say Howard's like 17, 16, 16, 15, 14, 14, whatever the numbers are. David's totally not shy. He would call Howard first. Other people, if you're a little bit more shy and you got to get your spiel down, then you go with the lowest one first. Go with the lowest one. And then by the time you hit the high value Howard Drzewski's, then you have your spiel down. Your goal, I'm going to stop share. Your number one goal is just to reconnect, just talk story. Don't bring up jobs. Don't bring up nothing. Because it always ends up you talk about job, right? So you reach out and go, hey, Howard, how are you doing, man? This is crazy, yeah? Huh? How's you? How, how's, how's it going? It, it, you, you, how do you guys do the news thing? And, and uh, so you just reconnect. 
And then how are you going to go, hey, so how's the job? Then you let them know. Because if they're up there, someone you can trust, and you say, you know what, I'm thinking about looking. And you're going to go, what you do again? Oh, you know, I'm in human resources, or I do like uh, recruiting. Hey, I think I know somebody. So 10% of your 20, two of them are going to go, I think I know somebody. So if you get 30, three of them are going to go, I think I know somebody. Yeah. And the rest will say, Casey, anything you need, you let me know, I'll help you. Those are the ones who will send the emails if you apply for a job. Okay. All right. Good. Any last remaining questions?